watching the end of the VOD from yesterday, um, and the guy is, you know, the MAGA guy is clearly pretty lost. Um, he brings up multiple times that uh, he used to be, you know, a Trump, you know, someone who would criticize Trump. But uh, he has people who know Trump personally, and that sort of what changed his mind, right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you recall that? Yep. Um, I don't, uh, so I, I listened to the whole thing. I don't recall you a single time bringing up the absolute, like, retardation of that point. Do you, do you recall ever, like, talking about that thought process and how flawed that is? No, but it's, it's a, it just sounds good to layman. Like, if I bring up that that's the stupidest fucking point, I'm going to sound, be like, well, what do you mean if somebody personally knows him? Somebody, yeah, but, somebody actually emailed me the best counter talking point. Like that's a really strong thing. Anecdotes and stories are really strong to people. Um, the best totally. response to that was, uh, and somebody emailed me. It was like, well, if we're going by who personally knows Trump, who would know him better than his vice president? So you should point out that Pence doesn't like him anymore. That would have been the best route to go. But you can't just say like, well, who cares what you personally think about a guy? Because people are like, well, that's more important than anything. Well, I, I agree that the anecdote is really strong, but you could point out like a, a comparable anecdote in the opposite direction. And so, you know, even, even if, even if you, you don't even have to lie about it too. You could just be like, Hey, hypothetically, let's say I had two friends and they told me that Trump, you know, is a kid. Trump is the, you know, literally Hitler. And he said, and he brags about loving Hitler in the background. Would that, would you weigh those equally to your experience and why or why not? Right. So you're essentially just like giving him a hypothetical about, you know, it, it forces him to confront the fact that he's weighing his personal experience so heavily and Oh shit. There might I think be he would either he, either he's not going to engage because it's a hypothetical. He'll just say, "Well, no one's saying that." Or if he is, or if he does engage, he'll just say, "Well, that's a good point. I don't know. I'd have to think about that." Right, and that okay, yeah, I totally agree with that. the The first thing he might not engage, and and, and the fact that it's a hypothetical that makes him look retarded. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he could possibly answer is, "Oh, I don't know. I've never thought about that." That also makes him look retarded, right? Because both instances show that the foundation for his beliefs that Trump is a good person or is actually intelligent or whatever it might be are super easily refuted by just one or two other people on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Maybe. So yeah. I, think that I mean, I, yeah, I mean, he, I feel like he ended up owning like really dumb points relating to this around like not knowing anything that was contrary to his narrative anyway, right? Like, have you heard about this? The electors thing? Oh, I don't know anything about that. Well, have you heard about, you know, what Barr said? Oh, I don't know anything about that. Have you heard, like, it seemed like he was very quick to just not yeah, know anything. Yeah, no, so. I, I agree. Obviously, it, it came off as incredibly weak for him to, to say that. But he, to, to your point, I think him arguing from that like feeling-based situation where you know, I've heard so many people, you know, uh, there, there's such like a there's such a um, coordinated effort behind the scenes to to attack him and get him out of there. Like he must be doing something right. You know, I truly believe his motivations are pure. He's obviously speaking from like a point of emotion there. No, um, he's like speaking I, from a point of you insane don't think? political partisan biasness. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, he's like, a, well, yeah, he's like emotionally invested in, in Trump's well-being and, su and success. Right. Or would, or would, I feel like those are the same. Thing. I don't think I would call it a, when you when we say emotional, I think we're implying that we're weighting some things like a little bit too heavily or not heavily enough. But I think it's just hardcore partisan. Like when I asked him about them or when we talked about the molar stuff and he was so upset about all the molar stuff. And then I immediately asked him, oh, then do you feel the same way about the Hillary stuff? And he 180. That wasn't just emotion. This is like willful ignorance. It was like insane how quickly he 180 in attitude there. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I feel like it's not bad faith, though. Do you think it's him being bad faith? I feel like he's just so ideologically, um, like, isolated in his own little, like, corner in, in, of the world where he's just, like, he believes the misinformation he sees because it reaffirm, reaffirms his worldview. I mean, how, like, um, I guess, like, how much agency do you think somebody has, has like... I mean, I understand what that? you're saying there, but at some point, it's not just, like, emotional. Like, an emotional defense of Trump might be, like... Um, I'm trying to think an emotional defense of Trump might be like you, you, something is presented to you and you're just like, you're a little bit maybe more partisan than you should be, or you're just granting him a little bit more le leeway or leniency than you should be. But at some point, right? Like this is like emotional. This is too emotional. Okay. Your kid comes home from school and you know, you find out that he's suspended for a week because he punched a kid in the face. All right. And it's like, okay, well, was that kid a bully? Maybe, you know, like, eh, you know you're know, you emotionally, right? It's your kid. You don't want to see your kid. That's, you're emotional, right? But mm -hmm. And you defend your kid, okay? But then let's say your kid comes home from school and he's suspended, he's, he's ex uh, expelled, okay? Because he stabbed two kids, like, in the neck, all right, with a knife. And you're like, well, f you know, Johnny's growing up to be an assassin training warrior, okay? This is just what he needs to do, right? You're, th at that point, it's not just an emotional investment. You've gone full retard. Um, and the reading off, like, all the quotes from... 
Robin, he's like, well, that trial by combat from Juliana, I don't know what trial by combat, that just means one-on-one. Like, I don't know, like, this is not just emotional. This is full, like, willful, reckless retardation. It's like another level of, it's not just an emotional investment. We are, we are turning the blinders on. Like, this guy spent, like, 10 minutes talking about how partisan TDS I am while he literally has, like, Trump collectible gold shoes in the background. Like, Yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. But I think, like, having, like, walking him to his own demise there is just so much more powerful than, like, stating what's factually obvious to you and anybody who's like willing to engage in the facts because like to him those there aren't facts right like you could say like trump clearly wanted to coup the government he used the insurrection as a way to i think you know violently delay the the certification of the election if, if you just say that he's just gonna be like well that's not true right i mean like, there's, I, there's... I kind of i have agree with you but I, the, I think if i made any errors at all the only thing i could have improved upon in that conversation was ending it like 30 minutes earlier i think that guy like engaged in his complete and total self-destruction like when i'm asking questions about like anything relating to the electric stuff, I was like well i don't know anything about this at all I've never heard of this don't know anything about it at all it's like okay um like wouldn't the follow-up question be then wouldn't the follow-up question just be oh okay well then how do you know it's not legitimate right well like, then what, when he started to say is, i don't he started well he started he started to yeah. say i'm not going to trust anything you say and I'm like well i can literally link you the documents and he's like well i don't want to get into the weeds right now like he's running any any reasonable semi-reasonable person even on the right can see that like holy shit, this guy is like super i mean I think at that point I agreed that like I think that is that is the kill shot when you're like uh, when he says I don't want to believe everything and anything you say and you're like don't believe me here's the documents outlining it and he's unwilling to engage in that I think just like stating that as in like yeah but this okay, happened hey, this exact this we can move on. yeah this happened exactly right sure I mean yeah I just think that like the que- again I to to your point I feel like the conversation can also like can can honestly go more quickly and end sooner if you're just asking him these things up front right. How did you come to the conclusion that Trump didn't coup the government? And I'll tell you why I came to the conclusion I, that he did coup the government. And he's going to be like, well, two friends told me that, you know, mm-hmm. he's a good guy. Yeah, right? I feel like and we I went down, like down this. I think we went down this exactly. He said that he felt like, well, everybody was attacking him. And so, you know, I understand why you don't like him, but I'm going to like him for the same reason you don't. And then I'm like, okay, well, I have the facts on my side and you don't. And the difference is I'm willing to get into any of these things. Do you want to get into any of them? And he's like, well, no, I don't. It's like, do you want to click any of the links I'm sending you? Well, no, I don't. Well, do you know about any of these things? Well, no, I don't. And I wouldn't trust reading anything. So I was like, okay, well, at that point, like, I think I think I went down every single one of these roads. Like, I think he's pretty, I think he self-destructed. The only thing I could have done is cut the combo off sooner and let him not ramble as much, but. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think the conversation was obviously, you know, it was like an very, very one-sided in, in your favor. But I think just the way in which you lead uh, him down the thought process that he has and pointing out the flaws and not the conclusions that he has, but how he came to the conclusions, I just think that's like, I just think that's like so much more powerful than, because like to, to your I point, I understand, I, I agree with you to some extent, exposing kind of like epistemic flaws is helpful, but I, I, I don't I don't know sometimes when these guys are talking in these environments that they realize like how flawed their thinking is, right? Like, I don't think so, they do, and but, but, honestly, fuck but pointing them, but it's it out, I don't people think we po- were listening, right? Yeah, I don't it's think it's just the people who are listening. Yeah, but I don't think pointing it out. I don't know if that's very compelling. Like, I think there's a decent number of people listening who are like, yeah, if you're in a stadium and there's a lot of energy around Trump and you're clapping, like that actually is a really good show of like how popular he is and how much he can motivate as a leader. Like, people think that's those are good arguments. <laughs> so if I'm saying like you understand I mean, that's not a good argument, right? And he's like, well, actually, it is a good argument. Well, now I just look like an asshole, right? Well, you do so that uh, you kind of do. It, you kind of just said exactly, you know, sort of like the main crux of the of the issue that I was referring to. You say you understand that's not a good argument, right? Instead of saying, how, like, how is that indicative of his competency, right? Like, you could just ask him that straight up. Because if you just say like that's not a good argument, is it right? He could just be like, no, it is a good argument. You're a moron. Obviously, he's popular, so therefore he's smart and competent, and people love him, and he's the best possible leader. And you could be like, how does like the amount of people clapping for him indicate his effectiveness of a leader? And then he's going to have to be like, rack his, you know, pea-sized brain for a second and be like, how does that actually link? I don't actually know. And he's going to talk out of his ass for a minute, and you're going to be able to tear apart whatever answer he's coming up with. Okay. Do you, do you disagree? Um, no, I think he would answer very quickly. And I think he answered very He would say, well, a guy, a guy that motivates all the people like that to get behind him is a good leader. I think he would just say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I... I, I get I get he might give some sort of like vacuous statement like that, but I think very easily you could just be like, like, what's a good leader to you? Somebody who's popular, right? Like, and again, you are getting pretty epistemic at this level, but and maybe I'm just speaking like anecdotally for myself. I find that aspect of the conversation the most persuasive aspect of it. And I, I'd be surprised if I'm alone there, but maybe maybe I truly and maybe I am in the minority. I mean, I understand what but you're saying, like- but now now we're going kind of like the exact opposite of kind of what you were suggesting earlier about drilling down on a specific thing. Well, now once I've asked a question like, well, what is a good leader? 
Well, I can tell you a good leader is somebody who wouldn't let the border go to shit like Kamala Harris. Uh, you know, a good leader is somebody who'd be strong on foreign policy and stands up to leaders. And we didn't have any wars under Trump. Well, now I've opened up like a whole new basket of shit we have to run down. It's like, okay, well, let's talk about the border. Let's talk about foreign policy. Like, it, like that question even in and of itself would open it up to so much more. I think that would have to be. Yeah, I, d I agree with you. I just don't necessarily think it would be a bad thing because drilling down on that would allow you to just expose the like underlying fundamental thought, uh, flawed thought process. Because um, even if you drill down on like the, well, the border's gone to sh and then you could be like, okay, what did, what did Biden do, or uh, what did Trump do to secure the border? And what did Biden do to secure the border? And there's very clear like causal links that we should be able to make, right? But he's not going to be able to make them. So, I mean, I, again, I feel like drilling down there, it does open up a whole new can of worms. You're also opening still... up a can of worms, though, where you're like, you're on losing. So, like, for instance, like he says, you go, okay, what did Trump do? Well, Trump ha Trump kept remaining in Mexico. Biden got rid of it. Okay, well. Well, Biden didn't get, well, Biden didn't really get rid of it, right? He, the court no, he did. Down. He did. And it was probably a bad, it was probably bad of him to get rid of it. But the reality is, is the number of people impacted by it isn't really meaningful. But like that, now it, now it already sounds like I'm kind of like, well, f this, that is true. And now we've gone from me pointing out on a very clear ground where he's saying like Trump is a good leader because people clap for him, which is retarded. But now because I drilled down so much on that, now we've jumped ship to the border argument. And now we've got a point where Trump actually did do good. And now that's in the viewer's mind, like everything prior to this is kind of like justified. Yeah, okay, yeah, Trump is kind of a good leader. And yeah, he did do some better shit on the border. Yeah, fuck. Like, now it's like, fuck, we got to fight on policy. And now we've got to get really into the numbers on, well, why does it matter that Biden might've made a bad decision relating to remain in Mexico, but overall he's better for the border, even though the numbers don't say that. Well, it's because COVID was here. Like now we're in a way more complicated argument, right? I, I guess that's fair, but again, I think you already pointed out the flaw in that in that process, and may, and maybe this is just my inexperience and not doing this every day like you do. But I mean, yeah, I feel like you could easily be like, yes, Biden did strike that down. Um, he struck it down for these reasons. The main cause for these surges at border crossings is the abuse of the si asylum process. Trump was able to limit this through you know the COVID restrictions that ultimately weren't able to be upheld under Biden. That's not really Biden's fault, is it? And then you could obviously pivot to the border bill, which was bipartisanly supported that Biden was willing to sign that Trump explicitly instructed people to turn down. So and, I, and again, I, I understand that that's getting into the weeds, but I still feel like like, again, from a factual standpoint, I know you're not concerned about fighting on any of those grounds, because even if like you like like you said, you would just side on the correct side of the argument. You know, if there was a bad decision Biden made, you wouldn't defend it. Um, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. Ultimately, it just it, ultimately it feels like drilling down not necessarily on the specific issue but on the thought process that led them to the initial conclusion i feel like is is kind of what i'm saying so yeah i don't know if that's i understand what you're saying i think right that there. the yeah for that style of conversation um i was already pressed for time and i already think that guy just shred himself so i'm not i'm not really concerned for the outcome of that but yeah. in that no, style I, of conversation if this is like a professional yeah, but, yeah if this is like a debate on stage and i'm like trying to do like a really good showing and i understand like where he's at and where i'm at i'm probably just going to go for like funny own this would be my guess so if he's saying some shit like you should have seen the energy you know when when trump was there or whatever then I, like i would ask some shit like, okay well who do you think could get more applause like trump or taylor swift like are you gonna vote for taylor swift for president like it would just be a snappy thing like that because i've quickly in a humorous way perfect. like illustrate yeah rather than like diving into all of the policy and the side things or whatever but yeah yeah that's great yeah i love it i mean yeah and, and but it, do you see it like at the same time that kind of just like immediately deflates that whole position sure this is a thought, more aggressive like i'm process. yeah it's an aggressive like i'm fighting with you now and we're gonna be sh on each other's throats and everything but i guess i just don't see that as like because i feel like you can do that in like a confrontational way because it is an argument it's a it's a conversation but i don't think you can i don't think that comes off as like an asshole thing to do whatsoever like i feel like and again to your point like your you know hesitation to be more confrontational in your ben Shapiro convo, convo or other convos you've had this year um i feel like could you know having just like a confrontation like that you know you know, even, you know, you did point it out to, in, in your defense in, in the Ben Shapiro conversation a bit, you know, I don't, you know, grade Trump on a curve. Mm -hmm. I grade him like I would any other president. So I feel like pointing out those, you know, incredible, you know, uh, inconsistencies there is, I don't, I don't think it's rude or aggressive or, you know, show, showcases a debate, a debate tactic at all or anything like that. I mean, yeah, I guess I, guess I don't see the, the reason for the hesitation there. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind. I appreciate that, Destiny. All right. Bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.